step-by-step -step instructions without special tools to change the fork seals on a Buell XB. Parts needed for this job, two bottles of HD fork oil type E. One fork will take almost a full bottle. A fork seal kit. This one came from St. Paul Buell. A flashlight helps. A breaker bar helps. A screwdriver or a pick to remove metal retaining clips. A T27. A 5 16th Allen. A quarter Allen. A PVC one and a quarter inch T for driving the seals. Two drivers like this or Allen keys to hold down the collar tube while a friend gets a 17 millimeter wrench on. An extension helps. A 22 millimeter socket. A 32 millimeter socket. Long is preferred. A short will barely fit and might scar up the fork. An axle removal tool. A spark plug socket, although some people claim will work, is just a little bit small. I don't want to scar up my axle. A custom dipstick. An air ratchet gun a ladder and a strap, or if you like to spend money, a pit bull stand. Loosen the brake caliper bolts here and here. Remove the fasteners or the fender here and here, as well as these two. Loosen the two pinch bolts. With the axle removal tool in place, loosen the axle. Now this is a left-handed thread nut, meaning it is not righty-tighty, lefty-loosey. It's righty-loosey, lefty-tighty. Do not make a mistake here. Lift the bike until the wheel spins freely. Continue to remove the axle. Next, you must remove the caliper. Before fully removing the wheel, bring it back and up so that you can free the caliper. The caliper is held on by two bolts. Make sure to zip tie it or cable tie it onto the mount here so that you don't put the weight on the brake line. Pro tip, after you have the calipers off, don't touch that or you'll be rebuilding your caliper. Remove the wheel. Use your 22 millimeter socket on the adjuster nut before you remove the fork. This way, if it's too tight and stiff on there, you won't need to use an impact. Loosen this 1 16th Allen. Loosen these two quarter Allen bolts. Have something soft underneath the fork like a box while you slide it down. As you slide it down, you will see the retaining ring clip start to be exposed. Remove it before you get to the bottom. You need to screw down the adjuster nut to access the ring clip. With your finger over the ring so it can't fly off, go ahead and pry it out. Unscrew the adjuster nut until it comes out. There's going to be a washer right here. Make sure that you don't lose it. Ah, this time it stayed in the bottom. So with your hand, get that washer and a little uh, pizza center bit there set aside. You're going to use an impact to get this next one off. A deep is much better. A short hardly goes on. You need to hold on to the bottom of the fork with your feet because this is actually attached to the outer tube and the inner damping rod. At this point the outer tube can slide down. You have the collar tube here with a little hole on this side and on this side. 
that's where you're going to get uh, an Allen key or an angled driver in to pull down while a friend puts a 17 millimeter socket between the top cap here and the metal washer here. Remove this part with the impact. Notice there is a washer and a plastic piece above the collar tube. If you simply remove the wrench at this point, those will fly into the air. You need to compress the collar tube down slightly while you slowly remove the wrench and allow tension off. Remove the washer and the plastic piece, put it aside. At this point, you can remove the collar tube. Notice that there is oil coming off. Notice that there is this black sliding bit on it. I recommend keeping that where it's at. At this point, you can dump your oil, but know that a spring is going to fall out. Make sure to note and mark with a zip tie what side goes on top. That way, if it falls down, rolls around, you know which way it goes back into the tube. You're going to turn over the fork tube. Use a screwdriver or a plastic instrument like this between the dust seal and the tube. Wiggle it out. Might take a little bit more work than that. That was a little easy. There is a metal retaining clip inside of here. Use a screwdriver to work it out. Put it over the dust seal so that it doesn't scratch anything. You're now going to use the fork as a slide hammer to knock out that old oil seal. Speaking of hammering, hammer that subscribe button right now. Turn the fork over. There is a metal retaining clip right here. Use a screwdriver to wedge between the two little spaces. Work it apart. Slip it out. Another retaining clip. A washer. The old oil seal. Now make sure that you look at this to see how it is orientated. Slip off the old dust cover. Now it's time to install the oil seal. Uh, you can just slip it on, but the service manual tells you to put tape here and here. Alright, so you have your new seal, and notice how it has one lip, two lip, three lip. The two lips go towards the top. The one lip goes down to the bottom. The tape helped a lot. I definitely recommend you put electrical tape. On the other fork where I did not use electrical tape, it was really hard to get around the spot, really hard to get on the spot. This time it, it felt butter smooth. Uh oh, I have a little bit of uh, tape residue here. I guess I have to throw the whole fork away. No, uh, let's try some WD-40 on there. Spray on a rag and then rub it off. I bet it'll come right off. Yeah, just like that magic washer. Inner clip. Top clip. You do have to spread this part slightly. I wouldn't spread it apart any more than you have to. I suspect if you really bent it out of shape, it wouldn't want to stay where it needs to stay. Flip it over. Here's where your one and a quarter inch PVC comes in play. Pop it on there. Position it so that the fender bracket is going to hold it up. Now, 
you'll know you're done when you hear a satisfying thud, uh, but specifically you will see the groove where you need to put the retaining clip. Use your screwdriver to work that retaining clip back into its groove. Push the dust seal in place. Some people use the driver for this. It's really not necessary. Just push. If you find that you're having trouble, use a plastic instrument to push against it. Flip it over. Grab your custom dipstick, put it in. The procedure is to pour in 8 ounces or so, lift up this rod several times, pour in 8 more ounces, lift up the rod several times, and then measure to the dipstick. So the first couple of times that you push up and down on the stamping rod, it's going to feel very easy to move, and then all of a sudden it's going to have a huge amount of resistance. One of the great things about working on your own machine is you get to understand how it works. And there are these little holes on the side here where fluid is getting pumped through. Kind of neat to gander at. Now when do you know when you're done or not? If you're hearing little <coughs> squirting noises, you're not done. But within a few ups and downs, you're going to realize you're done. Using your flashlight, Pour in until you can see the fluid is up to your dipstick. What if you put a little bit too much? Pour a little bit out. Once you're happy with the level, don't go crazy and grab it by this part. You can actually lift the outer tube high enough at this point to access one of the drain holes between the tubes and you'll have fluid running out onto the floor. Time to put the spring back in. Don't forget to clip off the zip tie that you used to tell you what side was what. Before reinserting the collar tube, pull up on the damping rod. Quickly drop it and grab the damping rod. Reinstall your top cap. At this point, you can grab the wrench, pull it off. Continue reassembly by fitting these three rods into the three holes. Now that you've had this part, you understand how your adjuster works. You screw down on the adjuster, the metal washer protects the plastic, the metal rods push down on the washer inside here, which pushes down on the collar tube, putting more tension on the spring preload. Don't forget your metal washer. Screw down the adjuster enough to get the metal retaining clip back onto the rod. You have to push down a little bit as you turn it. Reinstall your metal clip. Loosen the adjuster bolt to cover the retaining clip. 